Have you ever found the perfect knitting or crocheting pattern, especially larger ones like a blanket or a sweater, only to go buy that yarn and just had such a sticker shock. I love crafting, but sometimes the cost of yarn can really cause my wallet to shrivel in shock. Which is why today we're going to go over how to unravel thrifted sweaters so that you can reuse the yarn at a much more cost-effective price than what you can sometimes find when buying a whole sweater's worth of yarn. Don't get me wrong, I love supporting independent dyers and yarn creators, but sometimes I just want to knit a lot of sweaters without spending hundreds of dollars. <laughs> the sweater we're going to be unraveling today is this one from, I believe, American Eagle. It is a 55% cotton, 25% acrylic, 10% wool, and 10% silk blend. And I'm going to chat about some important aspects of unraveling sweaters if this is something that you want to do for yourself. I typically don't spend more than $8 a sweater at the thrift store and I find silk sweaters, cashmere sweaters, wool sweaters at those prices where I live. I'm specifically going to be talking about unraveling commercially made sweaters for this. The first thing that you're going to want to do is look at the seams. If the seams have some sort of overcast edge or some sort of edge that looks like it was sewn, that is not going to work because it means that the yarn was cut and you're just going to have a long string of yarn per row of your sweater and i guess unless you have the time and patience to splice all of those ends together you're not going to come away with a usable yarn what you're looking for is a chain stitch that is holding the panels of your sweater together i'll show you a little bit of a close-up of what this looks like and you can see exactly what the chain stitch is. One side will almost blend into the knitting, hard to see. You know that your yarn is going to be untacked for each panel. You're going to be separating your sweater into panels to unravel. Before we get to unraveling though, a really important note, especially for those of us who have maybe rather large wool collections or antique knitting collections like I do, you don't want to accidentally potentially bring something into your house from the thrift store that could eat through the rest of your wool. So the first thing that I do when I take a collection of new thrifted sweaters home is I moth proof them. So it'll be one of two ways. The way that I prefer to do it is with the oven. I'll turn the oven to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is this many degrees Celsius, and I'll put the wool sweaters in there for about 40 minutes. You want to make sure that there is good distance between the sweaters, but you don't really want the sweaters touching the sides of the oven because I have charred some of my sweaters, unfortunately. So just be aware and be cautious of that. If they can't go into the oven, like they're a large percentage made out of plastic, I don't prefer to buy acrylic sweaters or majority acrylic sweaters, but sometimes they are just too cute and I want the yarn too much and I'll get them, I'll put them in the freezer for three days. After that, I'm pretty sure that they are safe to go with the rest of my yarn collection and now we can get to the unraveling. So let's start by unraveling the first of our panels pick up the sweater you're planning to unravel and the seam ripper and let's meet at the craft table. Now this sweater is ready to be unraveled and the first thing that I like to do is turn it inside out to have better access to all of the seams that I'm going to be working on. So we're going to first split this sweater into all of its panels. Usually there's a front, a back, and one for each sleeve. This is a raglan style sweater, so you have a slightly different seam around the armhole. But what I find in many, many sweaters that I've unwound commercially is that the first seam that's easiest to do is the one that's under the arm because it runs continuously under the arm and down the side of the sweater. So what you're going to want to do is first find that chain stitch seam, and you'll find that the chain stitch seam, the chains themselves kind of look like they are running in a particular direction. There's a particular orientation, the bottom of the V and the top where it's uh, pierced by the previous chain stitch. There's an easy way to unravel, unravel chain stitch and a hard way. And the easiest way is this orientation being up and you're going to follow this orientation all the way to the other end, which will be here at this part of the sleeve. Sometimes I won't unravel at the cuff because the cuffs tend to be a little bit difficult, so I'll leave that for later and I'll skip to past where the ribbing is and I'll start unraveling here. So you can see you want to unravel where your chains look like this and not on the other end. <laughs> that becomes difficult. So how I like to do it is I like to put my seam ripper right underneath that top chain that I want to start unraveling at and just rip through it. You want to be a little careful to not catch any of the yarn underneath because we want that to stay intact. 
but we do want to rip through at least the first stitch of the chain. Then you'll have kind of a loop sticking up, and I won't go into that loop, but the one that it's sticking through, and I'll kind of pull on that to release the loop before it. And now we have a loose end. Mine gave me some trouble, so I'm gonna go back down below here, and loosen that again, until I get kind of like a loose end that I can pull on freely. And as you pull on that, you should just see your chain stitches unraveling. At a few points down the line, I like to separate my panels, and at this point you can even kind of pull on the bridge in between. <laughs> it comes apart quite easily at this point. You can kind of see we're just unraveling a chain stitch. Sometimes it can get a little dicey here at the bottom of the arm because you have two of these chain stitches crossing each other, but oh, that wasn't so bad. Even that one came apart under the arm. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but it was easy on this sweater. Let me keep going all the way down. Sometimes pulling like this, because you can get some felting in here that can kind of glue the panels together a little bit stronger. And sometimes you'll have some issues once you get to the tags, because these are sewn on. So I'll just carefully go through and remove with the seam ripper all the stitches on that tag. I personally like to save the tag and with a little safety pin, I will attach it to my unraveled sweater so that I can remember where I got the sweater from and most importantly, the contents of the yarn. Like what is the yarn made up of? Because I like to know. <laughs> and the more of these stitches that you can undo when you're taking the tag off, the better because you don't really want those threads to hang around because those will continue to hinder your unraveling process. Just gonna try to pick out some of those threads. And we're past the point of the tag, coming right down here. And then, like I said, sometimes when it gets to the ribbing, there seems to be sometimes a different sort of uh, yarn used or a, an additional bit of thread, so it can be a little bit difficult, but I find that the sleeve cuffs are the toughest for me. I have a long-term project I'm working on where I save these bits of yarn for, so I put it in that container. Um, you can, you're free to do with it what you want. A lot of times yarn companies will use the exact same yarn to sew up a sweater that they use to knit it, so you can also attach it to your unraveling, but it's usually such a small piece that I don't take the effort to do that. So you're just going to continue doing that with all of the seams that you find. And I'll show you any tricky ones that I come across, but I will probably just meet you again when we have all of these panels separated. My sweater is now successfully separated into all of its parts. Here we have one sleeve. Oh, I still have to do the cuff on this one. Okay, good thing to note. We have the other sleeve here and a front panel and a back panel. So the next step in our unraveling is to actually unravel each panel. The big thing is that we want to find out which end was the cast on end. It is a little bit easier with this sweater because it's already um, where it was attached to the collar. It wasn't fully cast off. It looks like they used live stitches, so it's already starting to unravel here. And if it's not like this, this is the first time I've seen this actually, so mostly what I'm looking for, there'll usually be like a little bit of a tail somewhere here of what they use to kind of secure that, that end here. So that is mostly what you're looking for. In this, I'm not going to need to, but I find it easiest when I do have a sweater like that is just to cut that off because it can be a little bit difficult to unpick and I would rather waste, quote unquote, waste that yarn, although I have other uses for it so I don't feel so bad. <laughs> and you'll find about, out about those uses in a future video, I promise. <laughs> so maybe you can use it for a similar thing, but um, I find it easier to cut off very closely to that and then unravel from there. So you wanna just use that as your starting point. So let's start with maybe, kinda looks like the back. Okay, so we'll start with the back. And before I start unraveling, I usually try to get just one nice, long, continuous bit of yarn coming from my panel before I put it on my equipment, whether that be a ball winder or a swift, just so that you know the fiddly process of starting it is out of the way. I usually find that the start tends to be a bit fiddly. How I like to do it is I like to pull apart a little bit on the stitches, and then I'll pull up you'll see like this is the same thing that happens when I cut away that cast off edge. Um, I get these little fuzzies so I just try to clear that a little bit because I want a nice smooth start. I 
have an unraveling machine, which I'm just going to show you in a second. And that means that just having a nice smooth start is important to get that working well. Ah, okay, so the next quote unquote complication with this sweater, and I have it in about half of the sweaters that I find uh, that are commercially knit, is that this was knit with two yarns at the same time. So you can see them here, and you might question like, well, why can't you just unravel them as if they were one, and they're knit into each other. So if I pull on this left one to unravel, you can see that we're getting stuck here. And the reason we're getting stuck is because you need to first unravel the second one, and then even if I were to continue pulling on the second one, I'm going to get stuck and caught on this first one again. So it has to be an alternating, you know, you unravel this one and then you unravel that one. And then you unravel this one and then you unravel that one. Now, <laughs> this is part of the precise reason why I built my unraveling machine, which I'm just going to show you right now because it makes this bit so much easier. And if it isn't like this, it makes the process totally hands-free. So what you see here is my unraveling machine, and it is maybe not the most robust piece of equipment. And I actually have more parts coming tomorrow to improve that setup a little bit to make it a little less tied together with twine. <laughs> And if you want to see more about this unraveling machine, make sure that you're subscribed because the next video that'll come out likely will be about how I came up with the design for this and how I built and put together this skein winder or unraveler as I like to call it. So let's set up the panels and I'll show you exactly how I use it, especially on these tricky ones where it's two yarns knit together as one. Okay, so the first thing that I usually need to do is I need something to hold the panel as it's being unraveled. So I like to use one of these pants hangers that have the clips on either end, and I clip it onto ribbing end on either side, and then I hang it up on something. Uh, for me, it's my blinds, and that kind of holds the panel while I unravel it. So it hangs up there on my patio window, on the hanger, on the blinds. And then I have my hands free to unravel from the bottom right here. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up one of these strands to go through my unraveler. Now that I fed the one strand of yarn through my unraveler, the other one I'm going to put through a ball winder. So I'm going to set this up next to my unraveler on my desk and feed the other strand through that. I'm a little concerned about the quality of this wool. Um, the sweater seems to be a little bit felted, so I'm worried that my unraveler has a little too much torque and is going to rip the yarn, but we'll see how this works, hopefully. Cross your fingers for me. All right, now the second strand of yarn is set up. This is not going to be a fully automated process. I was hoping with my unraveler this could be fully automated and I might be able to make it so in the future. I have some more design ideas that I'll discuss, but I do have to sit here so the unwinder is going to take care of one of the threads and I'm going to have to do the other one manually by hand with the unwinder. However, it's still so much easier if the winder can handle one than if I have to handle both because I just don't have enough hands for that. If you're doing this at home without the extra unwinder, it is possible, it's just a bit tedious. It's hard to tell, at least I haven't been able to tell in a store when the sweater made with one yarn versus two interknit like this. If anyone has been doing this for a while and knows, let me know and let everyone else know so that we don't <laughs> pick up sweaters with this complication. It is possible to do it by hand, but it just, it takes more patience. Sometimes that I don't have. Moment of truth, we are going to turn on the unwinder. I, I have used this before to successfully unwind other sweaters. For example, these two skeins were fully from using the unwinder. I'm just not sure with this wool and it being felted, how well it's going to do. So let's turn it on and let's see if, if it works. That might have been a little hard for you to see. It does work. I'm just not keeping up very well with my manual ball winding, so the yarn broke. So I'm just gonna have to pace myself a little bit better and I think it'll work. So let me also put you in a slightly different angle because I think it's a little bit dark from this direction. If 
I didn't have my unwinding machine, I don't think I would have continued trying to unravel the sweater. It was a very felted, so instead of doing it continuously, I would unravel by hand for a bit and then wind up both at the same time. But I just wanted to show off my unraveler a little bit because I was super proud of it. So here is a sweater that's knit up with just one thread and the unraveler is handling the unwinding of a sweater panel all on its own. And I think it is such an exciting thing to watch a unwinding machine work and work so smoothly and just how I envisioned. Okay, so we have unwound the sweater panels. I'm actually still working on them, but I wanted to kind of let you know what happens next while I'm working through the rest of them. But you'll have unwound them and found them to look almost kind of like ramen noodles. There's a lot of memory in the yarn for the stitches that it used to be in on the sweater it was in before. This is a bit difficult to knit with when it has that kind of memory. And on top of that too, we haven't actually washed this sweater at all. So what I like to do now is put it through a washing cycle. First, I will put it through some cold water and a gentle detergent. A lot of times I'll just use my laundry detergent and you don't wanna, especially if it's real wool, you don't wanna like agitate it. You just kinda wanna squeeze it around and swish it around and sometimes I let it soak in there. After it's soaked in there for a good amount of time, I will rinse it off in cold water. Again, you want to minimize agitation. You really want to avoid felting your yarn, that would be really sad. If the yarn has um, wool content in it, I will like to do a last rinse with a diluted vinegar solution. Wool really likes vinegar and it is another like deodorizing. <laughs> After that last step, I will wring the yarn out and hang it up to dry. I like to use hangers on my shower rod and I usually let that dry at least overnight. You want it to be fully dry before uh, you start using the yarn. And I guess at this point we have a few options. You can either use the yarn right away as it is, or we have a few other things to talk about that you can do and that I like to do. This is what the yarn now looks like after a wash. It still has a little bit of that stitch memory in it, but it is a lot less pronounced than it is before. And I'm just knitting up a swatch so that you can see that this yarn is perfectly usable in its current state. And this is what a knit up swatch of my new yarn would look like. I think it looks great, but I actually unwound this sweater with a very specific use case. And that was to use it at a higher gauge. So I need a thicker yarn and you saw that in the second gauge swatch and so I'm actually going to be plying it together with some other unraveled sweaters that I have to get it up to the gauge that I need to and make the yarn thickness that I need to. In order to ply sweater yarn though you have to run it through the spinning machine twice. First in a Z or S twist to give it that energy back and then you ply it in the opposite direction. So here is all of my sweater yarn unraveled. These are most of the panels together except for the one that I've already plied and I absolutely love the kind of tweed look of this sweater yarn. It is going to be absolutely perfect for my use case. I spun it together and plied it together with slightly warmer beige tones, which you can see is the start of the cardigan that I'm working on down below. Feel free to subscribe if you wanna know what exactly I'm knitting because I will be talking about that very, very soon. But yeah, this is how you unravel a sweater and turn it back into yarn that you can reuse for your own purposes. Please let me know if you start unraveling sweaters. I want to see your results and feel free to like and subscribe because we will be continuing this series on unraveling sweaters and knitting up some very interesting knits very, very soon. I'll see you next time. Happy unraveling and crafting. Bye.